Hey guys, welcome. I'm Brandon from Sasquatch B Studios. I'm working on a game called Samurado with my wife Nikki, and I've been making game dev tutorials on YouTube for the last two years. And in this video, we are going to demystify how video games are made so that by the end, you have a full understanding of how video games are actually created. The entire process of creating games is made in software called a game engine. There are a lot of game engines out there. You can even create your own if you want a challenge, but the majority of developers choose between three engines. Unity, Unreal, and Godot. If you're a chef, then the game engine is your kitchen. This is where all the magic happens. And no matter which engine you use, they all kind of work the same at a core level. So you've downloaded a game engine. What now? How do you start? How do you make a game with this? No matter what the genre of the game that you're working on is, you're gonna need stuff to put into your game engine. Like trees, your character, buildings, all the actual stuff that you'll be seeing and interacting with in the game. These are called assets. And again, depending on the genre of your game and how art heavy your game is, cause you know, games like Thomas Was Alone aren't very art heavy, but most of the time, a good portion of your time will be devoted to creating assets for your game. And the kind of assets you're going to need depends on whether you're making a 2D or a 3D game. For 2D games, there are many different art styles, hand-drawn, pixel art, etc. But all 2D art assets are called sprites. And sprites are drawn in programs like Photoshop. There's no magic here. They are literally hand-painted pixel by pixel by an artist, like my wife Nikki, who is the artist for Sasquatch B Studios. For 3D games, your assets will be called models. These models, whether they're castles, characters, or blades of grass, they are sculpted by hand by 3D artists. There's no magic here either. There's just a lot of technical tricks to turn a whole bunch of flat planes into the shape that you ultimately want. But most assets, especially characters, are completely lifeless until we get them animating. How does that work? For 2D, there are two main methods of animation and they are both painful. One is literally frame by frame animations. You'll end up with what's called a sprite sheet where the character is spaced apart in a grid in Photoshop. And the game engine will literally just flip through those a certain number of times per second to give the illusion of smooth movement. The second method though will give you much smoother animation and it's called rigged animation. You can do this in the engine or using external tools, but you can create what are called bones inside of your sprites and through a process called weight painting, you essentially assign certain parts of the sprite to certain bones so that when you rotate this bone, only his antenna thing actually moves. This, by the way, is exactly how it works for 3D animation as well. 3D characters are basically just made up of thousands of tiny quads. The engine's going to cut that in half because computers love triangles, but as a 3D artist, you'll mostly be working with quads, and quads have four points. And if you move any of those points around, you'll be stretching that quad in a specific way. So animating a 3D character is really just assigning certain vertices or points on the quad to certain bones, which again is called weight painting. And then you'll just move and rotate those bones. And moving those bones is just going to move, rotate, or stretch and shrink certain quads to make it look like that character is animating. And then you're moving all of those bones in a specific way in an animation timeline. Make sure it loops perfectly for things like a walk cycle. And then you import that character and animation data into your game engine. It's so cool. Real quick, if you're enjoying the video, then thank you if you leave a like or a comment. So once you have your assets in your game engine, you're going to start working with what's called game objects. This is Unity's term, by the way. I believe Unreal calls them actors and Godot calls them nodes, but they all do the same thing. A game object by itself is nothing more than just a point in your scene in your engine. And you have what's called its transform component on that point so that you can actually move it around in your scene. And on this so far invisible game object, we can add what are called components to actually start doing things with this game object. For example, if we add a renderer to our game object, and if it's 2D, it's gonna be some kind of sprite renderer. If it's 3D, it's gonna be a mesh renderer. But you can then assign your sprite asset to that renderer component, and renderer components get picked up by the game engine's camera, which actually then show that object on the screen. So now we have a player on the screen that you can actually see. That's because of the renderer component and the camera. And to get this character actually interacting and moving around in the world, you'll use Use a combination of pre-built components that are already in the engine and custom scripts that you code from scratch, which is where the bulk of their behavior is going to come from. Let's say I want this to be our player. 
this can be our ground. And when I play the game, I want gravity to actually make this guy fall onto the ground. The game engine already has components for that. We'll add a rigid body component for gravity and a collider component so that this object will collide with the ground. Colliders interact with other colliders though, so we need to add one to the ground as well. And when we hit play, he falls to the ground. Remember I said a good chunk of your time will be spent creating assets for your game? The other big chunk of your time is going to be spent coding behavior for your game. Code is how you give instructions to tell the engine what you want your game to do. Load a level, move the player, damage the enemy, collect a power up. Your code is usually going to be manipulating components on your game objects. Remember that we can adjust these transform numbers to move this game object around? Well, we can do the same thing with code too. The best place to do that is in the update function because this function runs every single frame. So for every single frame that this game is running, we'll say his transform.position is equal to his current transform position plus one on the X, which is horizontal, multiplied by an arbitrary move speed that I set up here, multiplied by time dot delta time. This just makes it so that no matter how many frames per second our game is running at, the speed will remain constant, whether it's five frames per second or 500 frames per second. Now when we hit play, you can see he's moving to the right smoothly. So that's your intro to code. A lot of what it does is it changes values on components to create the behavior that you want. Even when to play which animation on our player, that's all controlled with code. And then finally, you're going to tie all of this stuff together with sound, music, and effects. And effects usually boil down to two things, shaders and particles. Shaders will change how a sprite or a model looks in the game engine. That cell shaded tune look from Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, that's done with shaders. Shaders are a whole completely different thing where you have different tools and different programming languages to create them, but you can either code them yourself or use a node-based tool like ShaderGraph to hook different nodes together to create certain effects, which most modern game engines have built in now. Now, when it comes to particles, think sparks, smoke, explosions, that cool swish effect when you swing your sword, things like that. Particles are created in engine, and it's really just a group of sprites or models that you're spawning in together in a group. And then you're just adjusting things like the color and the transparency and the size over life to get the effect that you want. And where those spawn in and when those spawn in are again controlled with code. There is a steep learning curve when it comes to getting started with game dev, as you can probably see. But I think that it's one of the most rewarding art forms in the world. And if you found this video interesting and you wanna get started with learning how to create games, I highly recommend you check out this video, which will tell you step-by-step step how you can start learning game dev. I hope you enjoyed, guys. Bye.